The XB-70 Valkyrie is a groundbreaking nuclear-armed, deep-penetration supersonic strategic bomber prototype that proves American technological advancement. It earned the title of the largest and fastest-ever bomber aircraft in the history of American aviation by beating all its predecessors. Despite its remarkable capabilities, the Valkyrie could never enter into a production process. However, its only prototype is on display at the National Museum of the United States Air Force at Wright-Patterson AFB near Dayton, Ohio. So, let's delve into the details of design, development, and formidable impression on the aviation history of the XB-70 Valkyrie. During the intense atmosphere of the Cold War era, every strategist demanded an advanced strategic bomber aircraft to ensure fast delivery of thermonuclear bombs deep into Soviet territory while escaping capture on radar. In the early 1950s, there were only the fighters and anti-aircraft artillery even then, anti-aircraft guns were only marginally effective against the Soviet air defenses. Ultimately, this urge led to the creation of the North American Aviation XB-70 Valkyrie. Originally, the goal was to match the speed of the new Mach 2 capable B-58 Hustler bomber with the enormous heavy load capability and range of the old B-52 bomber. To send the bomber and its crew as far away from the nuclear explosion as possible, high speed was considered to be vitally required. Both North American Aviation and Boeing proposed designs for the new strategic bomber aircraft, but finally, on 23 December 1957, the North American proposal was approved by the U.S. Air Force, and on 24 January 1958, a contract was issued for Phase I development. It incorporated a variety of novel and experimental technology, including a novel kind of fuel. This boron-based fuel, often referred to as zip fuel, was believed to provide planes equipped to burn at an edge in range and speed since it was more energy dense than gasoline or jet fuel. This two-seated, six-engine, delta-winged Valkyrie could cruise for thousands of miles at Mach 3 plus while flying at 70,000 feet. In February 1958, the proposed bomber aircraft was designated B-70, with the prototypes receiving the X experimental prototype designation. The other part, that is Valkyrie, was named after the female battle spirits of the Norse methodology, which represented the mythical power and warrior spirit of this aircraft in the skies carrying a weight of 534,700 pounds. With a length of 185 feet and a height of 30 feet, it was no less than a giant. The body of the Valkyrie was built of titanium and stainless steel honeycomb layer panels. It was intended to make using the phenomenon known as compression lift, which is produced when the shockwave from an aircraft traveling at supersonic speeds supports a portion of the aircraft's weight. This special quality decreased the drag of the aircraft and proved one of the keys to the XB-70's performance. Nevertheless, the zip fuel was a dead end. Its exhaust was poisonous. Although there wouldn't be a significant risk of toxicity while in flight, ground workers maintaining engines powered by zip fuel would require a lot of personal protective equipment. Compounding the issue are exhaust particles from zip gasoline, which are also quite corrosive. It would take very little time for jet engines designed to run on this fuel to become harmful to operate. Thus, the less energy-dense but more stable jet fuel was chosen by the designers, which is JP-6 jet fuel. Secondly, in the late 1950s, the USSR introduced its first surface-to-air missiles, which altered the situation at 180 degrees and made the production of the XB-70 more questionable. As in front of these Soviet missiles, even the Mach 3 speed of XB-70 was not enough for its survival. But then, the US Air Force started operating missions at lower altitudes where the enemy radar would have a harder time tracking their target. However, the XB-70 Valkyrie offered little additional performance over the B-52 that it was meant to replace. Furthermore, it was far more expensive than the B-52, and even with a shorter range, and its fuel economy would also suffer when operating at a lower altitude. Then, the development of Intercontinental Ballistic Missiles ICBMs, acted as an endpoint to the production of XB-70. In such a technology-rich era, there could be several solutions to such technical problems, so why didn't America continue production of the XB-70 Valkyrie strategic bomber? Could it be that there were numerous potential solutions to the technical challenges it faced? 
Or perhaps, were these merely surface-level explanations concealing deeper motives behind halting the manufacturing plans? During two secret meetings in November 1959, Air Force General Nathan Twining proposed the B-70 for reconnaissance and striking rail-mobile Soviet ICBMs. However, Air Force Chief of Staff General Thomas White cautioned about Soviet rockets' capability against the B-70. President Eisenhower criticized the B-70's mission, deeming it unnecessary given the effectiveness and affordability of ICBMs. He highlighted the lengthy manufacturing timeline and compared bomber development to outdated weaponry. Consequently, in December 1959, the Air Force reduced the B-70 project to a single prototype, abandoning many subsystems. However, later in 1960, Kennedy supported the production of XB-70 and also made it part of its political campaign. But later, after becoming president, he canceled the project in 1961 as it had cost almost $7 billion and changed the XB-70 program to a research project for the advanced study of aerodynamics, propulsion, and other subjects related to large supersonic transports. On top of that, the production order was also reduced to three prototypes in March 1961. The two experimental XB-70A prototypes were named Air Vehicle 1 and 2, AV-1 and AV-2. On 7 May 1964, NAA finalized the first prototype of XB-70 called AV-1 in Palamade, California. Shortly after, they swiftly produced a second prototype, the AV-2, on 15 October 1964. However, the production of the third prototype was canceled in July 1964 before completion. On September 21, 1964, the first prototype, AV-1, took its first flight and achieved a milestone of Mach 1.1. This test flight was then followed by several test flights. After that, on October 14, 1965, AV-1 reached Mach 3.02 while flying at an altitude of 70,000 feet. This flight brought forth the AV-1 on 11 May 1964 at Palmdale, California. The shortcomings discovered on AV-1 were almost completely resolved on the AV-2, which took its maiden flight on 17 July 1965 and set a record for the highest speed among the two prototypes. On 3 January 1966, AV-2 maintained a speed of Mach 3.08 for 20 minutes. After one month, AV-2 attained Mach 3.06 in the air for 32 minutes and covered a distance of 3,900 kilometers in a time span of 91 minutes. On June 8, 1966, an unfortunate tragedy happened with the AV-2 in the air when it was in close formation with four other aircraft, including the F-104 Starfighter. As they were flying in formation, the F-104 collided with the tail fin of AV-2, which triggered a deadly explosion of the former. Despite losing both vertical stabilizers and wing damage, the Valkyrie managed to fly for 16 seconds before descending into an uncontrolled spin. The crash near Barstow, California, claimed the lives of two pilots and gravely injured another. The testing of AV-1 continued until February 4, 1969, even after the deadly incident that AV-2 met. The XB-70 AV-1 logged 83 flights totaling 160 hours and 16 minutes, while the AV-2 flew 46 times for 92 hours and 22 minutes. On 17 December 1968, AV-1 took its last supersonic flight. Later on February 4, 1969, it took off for its final flight from Wright-Patterson Air Force Base to the National Museum of the United States Air Force in Dayton, Ohio, where it remains as a testament to its groundbreaking design, impressive performance, and significant place in aviation history. The XB-70 was planned to be the backbone of the United States Air Force Strategic Air Command. But, regardless of the unsuccessful journey as a strategic bomber, the Valkyrie program took part in many other projects like the B-1B Lancer Bomber, the SR-71 Blackbird Spy Plane, and several other projects that made it an important part of American aviation. Though the production of the XB-70 Valkyrie didn't go further, yet it has set the standard for innovation and technological advancement in the field of supersonic bomber aircraft. Its state-of-the-art speed and technology impart a strong impression on the aviation department and forge new paths for the engineers.
It is still a monument of creativity and inspiration for many scholars and airplane buffs. What's your take on the future of this bomber aircraft? Share your insights related to excellence and the relentless quest for advancement in military aviation.